Hey everyone, welcome back to Curb. My name is Jason Muller and today I come to you with another one of our fish here from our aquarium, the skillet fish, which is in the tank in front of me. Now the skillet fish are very small, so we're actually going to bring the camera a little bit closer so we can get a better look. Uh, another one of our really cool animals that you can find here um, in the lower Hudson River as well as the Atlantic Ocean. So let's get a closer look. So as you can see, um, there's our skillet fish, very small. Um, they only grow about to you know, maybe three inches in length. Um, so that's why I zoomed in the camera here so you can get a better look. Um, their small size actually helps them out when they're in the river uh, or in the ocean because they actually can fit into small little crevices at the bottom of the river or the ocean and that actually helps them hide. So that works to their advantage and you'll a lot of times find skillet fish in oyster uh, reefs. That's where um, you know, they spend, uh, tend to live. Um, they will use those oyster shells for protection as well. So, you know, they learn how to adapt when they're small size, you know, certain fish. Uh, the naked goby is one of the smallest fish in the Hudson River, and they're really great at hiding from other predators. So, same thing with the skillet fish here. Um, they will also use oyster shells as part of their life cycle. They actually lay their eggs, uh, females, in empty oyster shells. They can lay, you know, a few hundred eggs at once. Um, so that is where the eggs will eventually hatch and then you'll find these skillet fish in the oyster reefs. Actually you can see I put an oyster shell in the tank here um, for our skillet fish. Uh, they also will be called uh, by some people the oyster cling fish because they actually can cling on to the shells. Um, you can't really see it at this point uh, because it's kind of backwards to us but fish actually have like a suction um, underneath their body um, that's caused by their fins. Um, they actually have modified pelvic fins which can be used to suction onto things. So you can actually see them suctioned on the glass there um, using those pelvic fins. So they kind of make a large disc which will help them cling on to different things and oyster shells in the wild. Um, so that's why they can call them the oyster cling fish. Um, they will also eat small worms, crustaceans, things like that, very tiny, uh, obviously very small, small amount. They're not going to be eating very large uh, animals out there in the river. Um, their range, they can be found anywhere from here in the northeast all the way down to Brazil along the coastal waters. Um, we really don't find many here in the Hudson River up where we are um, because the water's not really salty enough for them um, and they prefer those oyster reefs to the south. But this one was actually donated to us from the Brooklyn Bridge Park Conservancy, so we thank them. Um, another one of our animal ambassadors here uh, at Curb. But really cool fish. Um, we'll see if I can get them to move around here a little bit. Um, you can see that kind of that frying pan shape there. Oh, and there he goes. So you can see, and we'll see if we can get there. It's a good shot right there of our suction. Um, and you can see that right on the glass. So very cool. Um, another one of these cool animals that we have here in the Hudson River. So that was the skillet fish. Really cool fish here that we have at Curb and that we can find here in the Hudson River. So we'll be continuing to do these videos throughout the summer um, and we hope to see you soon.